Hey now bosses, welcome back to my channel. So a few weeks ago, I had the privilege to do my best friend's nails for her wedding and this is what I did. So I'm gonna be showing you step by step on how I created this set. So of course, the first thing that I'm doing is just going back and pushing back the cuticles. This is going to expose a new growth and help with reducing lifting. And as always, you can use a metal cuticle pusher, a plastic or wood, as long as it can be disinfected or disposed of. So after we finish pushing back the cuticles, I'm going to go in with my 180 pink sanding band and I'm going to go in and remove the shine from the natural nail. So going around the cuticle area, going from the right side all the way over to the left side and then just following the rest of the nail. And remember that when we're doing this step, we're literally just following to remove the shine. We don't want to thin down the natural nail at all, literally just removing that shiny layer because if not you will get lifting and during this step i'm using my e-file at about 5000 rpms but as always just adjust it to whatever speed you feel comfortable using it at After I finish removing the shine, I dust the nails off and then I'm going in with my extra extra long tapered nail tips. And of course, all of the products that you see me use are available on my website, which is getnail32.com. So as always, whenever you're applying the nail tips, you want to make sure that the nail tips fit exactly from sidewall to sidewall. You don't want to have to force the nail down if you see that there's like a, even just a tiny gap on the side. Just make sure you go up a size and if you need to file it down just a little bit to make it fit perfectly, that is completely fine. But I would rather you use a tip that's a little bit too big and like I said, just file it to fit perfectly than for you to use a smaller one and then force it down to make sure that it glues. Because when you do that, most likely eventually your client will either have lifting or the nail is going to just break off so make sure you keep that in mind so after we finish applying the nail tips i'm going to trim the nails down to her desired length and of course measuring bo both hands against each other after you trim them down after that we're going to go back in with the e-file and using that same 180 segment band and we're just going to gently just file the nail tip this is just going to blend the nail tip right in the middle to help the acrylic apply on very smoothly and we won't have a bump or anything in the middle after this we're going to dust the nails off and then we're going to go in with the primer and dehydrate So of course, going in with the NC dehydrator and primer, just a reminder that your dehydrator is going to just simply remove any oils that might be left on the natural nail. And the primer is going to help the acrylic adhere a lot better to the natural nail so you don't get lifting. So after we've primed and dehydrated the nails, we're going to go in with the acrylic. This is the color Perfect Pink. I'm also using my NC Monomer and my number 14 acrylic brush. And again, all of these products can be found on my website, getnail32.com. So as always, whenever I'm applying acrylic, I try to stick to the four ball method, which means that I apply my first bead right in the middle where the natural nail in the tip meets now if i do apply the bead like the first bead a little bit too big or to where you know it's just a good size and it gives me a nice thickness at the tip i'll skip the second bead and i'll go straight to the third one so as you guys seen i placed this one closer to the cuticle area and just brushing it down or patting it down and then brushing down towards the tip now I will say that this room that I was working in was pretty cold. Um, this week when I did her nails, we literally had temperatures like around, I can't remember y'all, but we had a snowstorm. 
and so it was really really cold in the house and so it was affecting the way that my acrylic was performing and so this is just a reminder that you want to make sure that your monomer is always at room temperature i usually would have like during the winter time i usually keep my little monomer warmer if you've watched any of my old old videos you would see that usually in the winter time i use it and again it just kind of warms up my monomer to where it'll be room temperature so if you ever feel like whenever you're applying acrylic and it's not performing too well maybe it's a little bit too runny or it's crystallizing and you notice that the room is cold most likely that is what's causing it because any other time i don't have this issue so i know some people if they don't have a monomer warmer they will warm up a bowl with water and then they just put their bottle of monomer like in the bowl to kind of warm it up a bit um but whatever you got to do just make sure that the monomer is at room temperature that way you have a smooth uh not smoothless but a flawless application but again we're just going in and doing a four ball method um i kind of cut off the last one but just did the first bead right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet placing the second bead right below that one same thing y'all patting down brushing down and as you guys seen i also wiped the side of the nails to make sure that the acrylic does not take away from my shape after that i placed my third bead closer to the cuticle area and very gently brushing down making sure that the acrylic does not get on the skin and if it does i just go in and very gently clean very gently and fast cleaning around the cuticle area and of course wiping my brush off before i do so after that i'm going in with my fourth bead and this one i just placed closer to the cuticle area and as always while i'm working i'm looking at my nail from different angles that way i am able to see if i need to apply more acrylic in certain areas and if i have a nice apex and good thickness at the tip and just an overall nice structure i'll move on to the next one if i have any bumps or lumps or my tip is too thin or i have no apex then of course i'll go in and add a little bit more wherever it's needed so don't think that because you're do doing a three ball method four ball method that you can only use that amount of beads again just look at your nail from different angles and if you need to add more that is completely fine but anyways while you guys are watching because this is the same step over and over again i'm just going to give you guys a little backstory on my best friend and i so me and her have been friends since middle school we are now 27 years old and she was getting married this weekend so i actually am a bridesmaid for her wedding so after i did her nails i did mine the next day and she just wanted all of the bridesmaids i believe it was like 13 bridesmaids and she just wanted us to do a just a plain french uh white french tip and french tip on our toes as well so i did exactly that i did mine a lot shorter than hers just because y'all i don't wear nails as often as i used to so i need to make sure that i'm able to function with my nails but yeah i was really happy for her um she got engaged maybe a year ago and so i definitely could not wait for the wedding and let me just say that the entire wedding was absolutely beautiful so i am just honored to of course be a part of it and to be able to do her nails and just to be able to witness her and her husband get married and i feel like it finally hit that we're actually getting older y'all like from middle school to now we're both getting married like it's just amazing just because i feel like nowadays you don't really see too many friendships just lasting this long so when you do have those people those few people you definitely have to make sure that you sh cherish those friendships and hold on tight to them so she's definitely one of those special you know friendships that i have but um yeah so anyways we're gonna go ahead and finish applying the acrylic on all of them and then we're gonna move on to the next step
Alrighty, so after we finish applying the acrylic on all of the nails, I'm going in with my 8080 hand filed and we're just going to go in and reshape the nails. She did want them like very squared. So of course I'm going in on both sides at exactly a 90 degree angle and then following the free edge also at a 90 degree angle. That way we have the perfect squared shape. And of course, my nail tips that I used are already a tapered square shape. So you really don't have to do too much falling, but of course, just perfecting the shape and redefining it after we apply the acrylic because it the acrylic does take away from the shape. It'll uh, round the corners off and you guys notice that I did not pre-shape the nails after um, applying the tip. So just going in and doing all of that reshaping now. And I forgot to mention, but the little thing that you see underneath or the fan or the dust collector that you guys see underneath is by McCart. This is their dust collector. Now, I will say that I've gone through so many dust collectors, y'all, like so many. And I feel like they pretty much all do just about the same. Um, they do really good with being able to keep the dust out of my face to where I'm not breathing the dust in which is a plus for me because i feel like that's really my main concern is i just don't want to be breathing in the fumes and the dust while i'm working but it is you know like still dust around my work area so it doesn't necessarily collect all of the dust but it definitely does a good job of keeping it out of my face which is most important to me Alrighty, so after we finish reshaping the nails, we're going in with my 5-in-1 drill bit. And we're just going in and, of course, falling around the cuticle area first, going from the right side all the way around to the left side, just going back and forth and then just falling the rest of the nail to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Now, after I apply my acrylic, for the most part, all of my nails are always nice and smooth, no bumps or lumps. But I still make sure that I file everything just to, you know, like after I file the cuticle area, I just need to make sure that everything is nice and even. But I mainly focus all of my filing around the cuticle area to make sure that I have or that I get no lifting at all. And then as you guys see, I also file right underneath the free edge to make sure that I remove any bulk from the tip. Alrighty, so after we finish filing all of the nails with the e-file, I'm going in with my buffer and we're gonna go ahead and buff all of the nails. And this is gonna make sure that we get rid of any of the scratches left on the nails from the hand file or the e-file.
After we finish buffing, we want to make sure that we dust the nails off really good and you can have your client go wash their hands or just wipe them off with an alcohol wipe, which is what I did. And then after that, I'm going in with a French tip. I'm going to do the French tip on the ring finger, the index finger and the thumb. And y'all, we we're having a good conversation. So she kept moving. And after a while, I'm like, girl, I need you to stay real steady because this is a French tip. So as you guys can see, like it was some shaking. And so I was having to go in with my small cleanup brush, but I had it looking good. But I'm just using my small nail art brush. I do sell these as well. It comes with a pack of three. And then my cleanup brush that I was using, it comes in a set of five brushes that I sell, which are a part of my NC collection. And again, I'll be sure to link everything down below so you guys can go check it out. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go in with the NC Gel Top Coat and I'm going to apply that on the middle finger and the pinky and of course curing for 60 seconds and then after that we're going to go in with the acrylic powder in the shade Blanca also by um, my NC collection and we're going to be doing some 3D flowers just something very simple very clean looking and I'm not going to lie y'all usually I get very nervous when it comes to doing 3D art because it seems like no matter how much I practice how much I try them out I just can never get them just right and so um i'm able to do just these little simple petals so as you guys see now i'm only going to be doing three on this nail and then just two on the pinky because y'all these little things definitely always give me a hard time i know one of the things that i have to always make sure i do is just work with a very dry bead and just be really really gentle as i'm working um but to do these i am using my 3d art brush and this one is also one of the ones that comes in a set of five they're like the double ended brushes and so really you get 10 different type of brushes um, in a set of five. So definitely come in handy. But yeah, it didn't look too, too bad. I actually really like it and it probably looks a lot better on video. But for the pinky, I'm just going to be doing two petals coming from the cuticle area. And then after we finish this, we're going to go in and apply some bling. So to apply the stones, I'm going to be using my hard gel and I'm using my wax pencil to pick up the stones. I'm just doing some like right in the middle of the petals and then I'm also just doing some scattered, scattered ones around the pinky. And then for the middle finger, I'm just going to be doing some um, or one just in the center and then I'm going to do one on each finger just around the cuticle area and then after this we're going to go ahead and just do or of course cure this and then we're going in with my nc gel top coat and applying that on all of the nails with the french tip and then we're going to cure for another 60 seconds after we finish curing we're going to go in with some cuticle oil just to moisturize my client's hands and here is the final look as you guys can see they turned out absolutely beautiful it's not doing too much and i just really really like them